I'm going to start out with a question. How many of you think that you're bad at math? How about science? English? Well, fortunately, I have some good news. There's a, none of you in this room are bad at math or English or science. Uh, in the past, you've probably just had a setback that's made you believe that. There's actually also no such thing as failing or failure. I prefer the term setback. Everyone in this room was born with equal learning capacity. What that means was everyone was born with equal opportunities to learn and grow. It's just a whether, it's just a fact, it's whether or not you take them. Through my TED talk, I decided to conduct my own set of research and I administered a self-efficacy quiz to grades four through seven. To break that down, self, as you know, means you. Efficacy, however, means your motivation to succeed. So a self-efficacy quiz is really just a measure of how much you as a person believe you can succeed. Which brings me to my topic, mindsets. Mindsets were first a discovery made by Carol Dweck. She states that there are two mindsets, the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Your mindset is really just the way that your brain functions and takes in data as well as dealing with different problems. The first mindset is the fixed mindset. One of the biggest attributes of someone with a fixed mindset is that they believe you're either smart or you're not, and there's nothing you can do about that. For example, say someone with a fixed mindset has not gotten such a good grade on their math test. They would say, well, I must not be good at math. And, a, and then at that point, they're going to stop putting in effort to change that, and they're going to fall deeper into the fixed mindset habits. However, someone with a growth mindset one of the biggest attributes of someone with a growth mindset is that they believe their basic intelligence and abilities can be changed with hard work and effort. So say someone with a growth mindset also hasn't gotten such a good grade on their math test. Instead of saying, I'm not good at math, they would simply say, I'll study harder next time because they know that the amount of effort they put into something is um, directly related to how much success they're going to get out of it. Through my research, I discovered a very important word that's important to changing your mindset, and that's the word yet. By adding yet to any sentence, you're automatically changing your mindset and your attitude towards the setback you just faced. So say you're back where you haven't done so well on a math test. Instead of saying, I'm not good at math, simply say, I'm not where I want to be in my math class yet. As I said, I administered a self-efficacy quiz to grades four through seven. That is directly related to mindsets because, as I said earlier, a self-efficacy quiz is based on your motivation to succeed. And your mindset, the philosophy behind a mindset, is that the more you believe you can succeed, the more likely you will. These are the results of my self-efficacy quiz. I uh, separated them by grade and by gender. If you look at the academic, you'll see that girls are consistently scoring higher than boys are. That's not because girls are necessarily smarter than boys. It's simply because the way the traditional school system is set up, it's more conducive towards a way the girl learns. For example, girls tend to store, score higher in sections like homework and participation, whereas, grades, uh, whereas boys tend to score better on sections like tests. And grades and participation are typically worth more points in your overall grade than tests are. If you look at social, you'll see that in grades four and five, girls are scoring higher than boys are, or boys are scoring, scoring higher than girls are. But in grades six and seven, the girls surpass the boys. This can be attributed to a theory that says that in fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, although boys are maturing at an average steady pace, between the grades of fifth and sixth grade, girls start maturing at a much more rapid pace socially. And finally, if you look at emotional, you'll see that girls are typically scoring higher than boys are. That's where we get our stereotype that girls are more emotional than boys, when really, at this age, girls are just more emotionally mature than boys are. How many of you have heard some of the things I've talked about in my talk from teachers or other adults? Well, I got in touch with our lower school director, Ms. Kennedy, to interview her about some of the things teachers at Mayfield were doing to promote growth mindsets in the classroom. One of the things that our teachers at Mayfield are doing, as well as teachers all across the nation are doing, is changing the way they give praise. A very common way of giving praise is, you're so smart or you're so good at this. 
This is actually not an um, effective way of giving praise because then the child starts to believe that they don't need to put in as much effort. And then when they hit a setback, they start falling into fixed mindset habits. A more appropriate way to give praise is, I can see how much effort you put into this or keep up the good work. Because then the child recognizes that they are being recognized for their hard work and it instills self-motivation, which is an important lesson to have when you later in life. Since I figured through my talk I would trigger some, oh no, I think I have a fixed mindset reactions, I put together five easy steps to changing your mindset. Step one is to role model only the best people. Identify the people who you think of as the best and what makes them so successful, and then copy them. Although you want to make sure you're doing something that's effective for you because your brain might function or take in data differently than theirs does. Step two. Reflect on your current beliefs. Think to yourself, huh, is what I'm doing now working? If not, change it. Step three is set vision and goals for yourself. If you have something to work towards, it's a lot more satisfying when you get there. Plus, it will give you the extra motivation and perseverance you need to get back to get past big mind setbacks. Step four, find your voice. How are you as a person going to tell the world your opinions, what you care about? How are you going to make sure the world hears you? And finally, step five, protect your brand new mindset. Don't let anyone with a fixed mindset bring you down or tell you you're not good enough because the only one who can guide your success is, you guessed it, you. So remember, you can be anyone or anything you want to be as long as you set your mindset to it. Thank you.